Evening guys, um, welcome back to Finance Lingo. In this video, I'll be talking about this APEC Reality, which is basically a uh, hold, hold the company of uh, ERA Singapore as well as Cowell Banker. So uh, let's get started with the disclaimer. This presentation is provided to you for general information only and does not constitute a recommendation and offer a solicitation to subscribe for or purchase or sell the investment products mentioned herein. So basically, I'm just sharing with you my opinion on this coming ERA uh, IPO. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the erasingapore.com website. So basically, this is a real estate company. Uh, sorry, real estate agents company. Okay, so this is very, uh, this company is well known to us because they do a lot of marketing on the straight times. Okay, so this is one of the ERA Singapore and another, another one is this Cobalt Banker Real Estate Singapore. These two companies is all under the roof of this company APEC Reality and this is the prospectus of this coming IPO. So to obtain a copy of this prospectus, you guys just need to go to mes.gov.sg, click on the Opera, and you'll be led, led to these sites. Click on the Office of Shares. You will be presented with this site as well. Um, correction, you will be come to this uh, sites over here. Then they click on the link Opera of the APEC Reality. You will be able to download the uh, APEC Reality prospectus. Alternatively, just go to www.sgx.com, go to company information and prospectus. Let me just enlarge for you. Go to this IPO prospectus, click on it, and you'll be presented with this. So this is the IPO closing date, September 26, 12 noon, Singapore time. So when you click this, you will be able to download the prospectus as well. Okay, so um, I've downloaded it, so, not, so as not to waste much time. So this is the APEC reality. Okay, so um, of course I went through the prospectus and these are some of the key important pages that I've highlighted. So now let's get started with page one. Okay, so there is uh, this company is offering 48 million shares. Okay, and of which 44 million will go to institution and private placements. And among uh, this 48 million, 4.4 million will go to public shares. And this is where I'll be, we will be, a lot of us will be balloting for these shares over here. Okay, now next, um, I'm just going to go to the next important point. I won't go through this point one, two, point three, point one, two, and three, uh, but one of the most important thing, I'll need to go to point six, which I think a lot of people will be very interested. The, the prospectors have made it clear that the company intend to distribute at least 50% of the net profit as dividends for financial year 2017 and 2018. This is very rewarding and apparently um, I do not know if that this thing will continue for 2019 or not, but I do believe that they will. So uh, let's look forward to that. But nonetheless, I can guarantee you, you that they will distribute this 50% net profit. Okay, how much dividends? I'll work that out later for you. Okay, so now let's go to page 30. Okay, this is the timetable of this thing. Okay, it started since 21st September. People can start balloting for these shares. Okay, and 26 September, which is on the Tuesday closing, Tuesday noon is the closing date. Okay, on this 3rd of, uh, okay, sorry, 28th of September is the start of trading day, which is uh, Thursday early morning. Okay, so now let's go to page 45. Okay, so on this page 45, uh, one of the most key important thing is I need to highlight to you guys is correction, page 49. Okay, is that uh, once this company is listed, Mr. Tan Chun Hong. Okay, who uh, who is this Tan Chun Hong? Just let me highlight this to you. Tan Chun Hong is this guy shown over here. Okay, he is the major shareholders of this company. Okay, so assuming that... Uh, there's no over there's no uh, over allotment ex option exercised he will be holding 74.7% and assuming it's exercised he will be holding 72% of this company henceforth to say even if it's listed he still remain the largest shareholders of the company and he made the entire literally he has the right to make all the decisions and um, it will be also implies that probably in the AGM you don't have actually much voting rights but nonetheless it's also good to be, have such big ownership in this company because that means to say whatever happened to the company he suffers the mills and if he, if the ship 
this company does land on the Hawaii island, well, good. That's good for all the shareholders as well because he holds the largest pie and this ship belongs to him. Okay, so yes, he is the major largest. He's the largest shareholders. Okay, so um, apart from that, uh, dividend policy. I'll just probably skip it. He put it on page one. Okay, and they intend to distribute fifty percent. Now we go to page fifty-five. So uh, what are they going to do with this IPO proceeds? They are going to raise about 30 over plus millions. Just let me check is that. Yes, they are going to raise about 30, 29 millions. Okay, in this IPO. So what are they going to use the money for? Okay, so let's take a look over here on this page 55. Okay, among the 29 millions, or 10 million will be used to expand their presence in Singapore. Okay. And apart another ten million, um, they are gonna use it to expand the range of service to other Asia Pacific regions. As for the rest, they are just gonna uh, improve their IT infrastructure and some corporate working capital as well. So uh, the main things I would like to highlight here is that I think they are the main objective here is uh, these regions whereby I see that there's a lot of opportunities here, especially in China and Vietnam and Hong Kong etc. So this is a place whereby. It presents a lot of growth opportunities, which is a plus point, but it's not. Um, uh, it's it's not. It won't be very straightforward. And it won't be very fast. Okay, but uh, going forward, this is the place where the the gold mine is. All right. So now let's go on to the page fifty four and fifty eight. Let's collection for fifty four. Okay, after the IPO, the company successfully completed its IPO process. The company, the share of the equity value, we are looking at 121 million. Okay, so net of net, what is the NAV uh, after the IPO for each shares? So when we are looking at NAV, you mu we must, I must highlight to you guys that NAV of this company after the IPO is only looking at about 35%. Uh, sorry, 35 cents. And the share price is 66 cents okay uh what does that mean so just let me go show you guys okay the ipo here we are looking at offer price of 66 cents per share i just want to enlarge okay yes 66 cents and when that means to say that well if uh once the ipo process is completed okay yes the uh, equity value is only looking at 35 cents uh, this is a bad sign. I don't think that this is a bad sign because the company does have a pretty solid earnings as well, which I'll be presenting to you guys later on. Okay, so um, to me, this is not the major. This is not the main concern. This is based on the accounting value. How much is the assets worth in the company after the IPO? Since the company have a lot of sustainable earnings, I do not see that this is a major concern. Okay, so but you guys need to be aware that what is accounting numbers that you guys are looking at. So now I'm just going to go to page 60. Okay, this is the um, past few years of the earnings reported by this company for the financial year 2014 to the financial year 2016. That's why we can see that from the 2014 to 2016, the earnings of this company have been growing pretty steadily. Okay, so when we when they extracted the first quarter of 2016 and the first quarter of 2017, which is this year, there have been a very significant increase, which is about 10 to 20 percent increase in the revenues. I just made a rough estimation. So based on what was uh, what was reported by them, okay, the adjusted earnings per share, okay, we are looking at about um, 1.13 cents, and compared to 0.54 cents reported last year. So and this year they have already reported pretty good in growth in revenue so I do expect that it's going to remain constant because the past few years the government had implemented a TDSR total debt trash uh, total debt ratio something like that so which has caused a big major decline in the, the revenue that they earn but nonetheless the business had picked up so I do expect this one to continue going forward so um, as what we can see right, the revenue has been good and picking up so I'm just going to base much of my estimate based on this financial 2016 as to least expected outcomes. Nonetheless, of course, I do expect more, but I'm just going to use it as a simple benchmark. Okay, uh, so you can see here it did pretty well, so I expected more. 
Okay, so here we are. Now I'm just gonna go to page 83. Okay, this is the corporate structure of the APEC reality. Okay, what we can see here is hundred they own hundred percent of ERA Singapore and the rest of the ERA associates companies. Okay, and real estate Hong Kong as well. So Koa Bankers is also fully owned by them. They run literally on the same office block. Okay, next um I'm just gonna click page eighty four. Okay, so um what I understand here is that this ERA is um they hold the regional master franchise rights to the Asia Pacific regions. Okay, these countries under the okay include all these Australia, Brunei, Cambodia, China, Hong Kong, and Macau, Indonesia, Japan, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, New Zealand, Korea, Philippines, and Papua New Guinea, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam. Basically, it's just Asia or Southeast Asia. So um, all right, so. This is uh, just to highlight to you guys, okay. Well, and next, I'm just gonna page ninety two. Okay, this is the pie chart of the entire market share of ERA. So, that's what we can see here, ERA holds the twenty one point one percent of the entire market share, where our prop next might hold nineteen point one four percent, and the remaining company minor ones hold on about thirty seven point one percent of this entire Singapore market share okay so era is pretty holds presently the largest and followed by prop next all right so um next i'm just gonna go to page 93 now as i can see that uh, the number of agents that they have um, report um, that they have okay they have been growing steadily Okay, as of the March two zero one March two zero one seven, they have two thousand two hundred property agents out there, and to read the rates in the year two zero one three, this is the year where TDSR framework was implemented. Uh, there was according to what I understand, there was a big decline in the revenue that they earned in that year, and after that, uh, you know, despite that, you no know, a business, uh, the outlook wasn't that gloomy as what most expected, and the business agents that they can re uh, recruit is constantly increasing as well and that means to say that there's also sign that the business is picking up so what well, we can see the number of agents that they have is pretty good and it's always on an increasing trend okay now i'm just going to go to page 97 okay now this is the net profit of their company so uh, you can see here in 2013 that because of this TDSR, there's a decline, a significant decline in the net profit, and uh, it continues goes on for the next few years. But ever since now, we we have we see a reversal, and from a stock broker point of view, this is kind of reversal that is likely going to go for a very persistent long trend. Okay, this is what I as stock broker I love to see this kind of trend. That's a reversal, and this is a kind of resilience and this is the lowest profit i suspect and i guess and i estimate that this is the lowest profit they will be report for the next five six years and which should i which means to say uh, i don't see any likelihood that they're going to make this lead this amount of net profit for foreseeable next for futures okay so i do expect they are going to make more profits over the foreseeable future so um okay because I see that the worst is over for them uh, in 2015 and more earnings is the outlook looks good. Okay, so now I'm just going to go to page 330. So as what well, we can see here, um, I just take the lowest form of properties, the cheapest form of properties as a simple uh, just indicators. Okay, what we can see here, this is the HDB resale market share. And this is the total value of resale flats transacted. So as well, we can see ever since the introduction of TDSR, there's a big decline. After that, everything seems to get better and better each year. Okay, the market share of ERAs is hold pretty good, and there's some significant increase as well. Okay, when we see the total number of HDB flats transacted in Singapore, ever since the TDSR, a big decline, a big dive. Thereafter, things start to get better. So I do see that this thing is going to go continue to go forward, and it's probably going to break out these numbers in the negative two zero one eight. Or two zero one nine, so things is getting better for them. So that I can see here from this stats here, there is a definite increase in growth. And that is uh, for foreseeable future. Okay, this is definitely a good 
good signs here. Of course, there's a lot of other stats you guys should look through it, but I just took the HDB one as the most lowest form of properties to as a calculation to, uh, to as for my estimates. All right, so I'm just not going to go through much details. I'm just going to leave you guys to with more details. You guys can read through this yourself. So now I'm just going to go back to my calculations. So uh, I'm just going to go to page 60. Corrections, uh, this will be page 60. Okay, so as what we can see here, okay, for the financial year 2016, 2016, let's, let me get the numbers right. Okay, the company made 15.8 million profit. Okay, so uh, as for the first quarter, 2016 and first quarter, which are reported, the company had, for first quarter, 2017, the company had made 4 million net profit, thereby taking a reasonable estimate. Okay, I had derived that uh, financial 2017 earnings is coming close to about 60 million or even more. Okay, um, and since they work out the earning per share, I'm just not going to spend much time work on it. So I can easily derive that the least I should expect is that they make about 4.52 cents per share. So of dividends. Henceforth, with this 4.52 cents, um, let me see, 4.52, did I get my numbers right? Okay, so, okay, I, I earlier basically used another number, so I just used 4.47. Okay, um, anyway, just some estimates, I just co to correct these numbers, but anyway, uh, you guys can just ignore the next mole, last next mole, so you should, because the number is not significant. So um, what we can what I derive here is that based on the PE ratios of the IPO, uh, you are looking at about fourteen PE ratios. All right, so uh, I think it's pretty fair value. But looking at that, that's growth. I do see that there's potential. You could share price to go about seventy or seventy plus. But at that point, it should be another stage of stagnation. I don't see it going to go any things above that for foreseeable future. But uh, of course, do if let's say three years down, of course, I think that is great possibility that can break eighty cents. But uh, let's say if the share price were to go down to you no know, between fifty and sixty, I do see that's a very good acquisition point because of a net of net, when I work out the dividends based on the earnings, okay, I work out that about two point two two cents of earnings per share, and this can translate to about four point four seven dividend yield, which is very attractive, okay. We have for a company that has some, some growth, you know, and a very, very resilient growth. So this will be very attractive. So I do not see a much likelihood they can touch 50 cents, probably in the range of slum. At the lowest, we can look at the 60 cents or maybe 59 or 58 cents, okay, to give you a dividend of 3.7. Okay, so uh, I do I do guess that uh, the IPO price will probably start at around this 66 to 70 cents range for the first week, okay. So um, from I'm just going to extract from here. Go to this page sixty. Okay. Uh, what I basically derive here is that uh, to make my assumptions is that um, okay. To I use this uh, extract from this page sixty. So basically, what I did here was um, I took out the um, the revenues in millions and it, it, and work out the earnings per share to see if there's any consistency. So as what I can see here are all the numbers extracted from this uh, comprehensive uh, the, the income statement. So from then on, um, I derived that, okay, using the total revenue minus of the total expenses, I derived the profits and less of all the income tax where I can, okay, I got all these numbers, all right. So basically this, uh, this entire left hand column is just extract from this table in a summarized form and the earnings per share as follows. So then from here, all right, I do my further um, derived uh, implications. Uh, oh, basically, it's my Okay, so when the expenses divided by revenue, okay, what well we can see here for the past three years, the total expenses divided by total revenue is we can see that the uh, ratios comes to about ninety five percent thereabout, which is very consistent over the years. Okay, and as for the net profit, you can see that the net profits is always in between this range so then the net profit we are looking at the maximum of 5.72 percent from the revenue 
and the average is about 5.01 with the lowest at 3.7 so all net of net i'm looking at about five percent of the company's net profit that can they did de that they derive from the revenue so having said that the first quarter already did very well okay henceforth i do expect greater net profit reported at the end of the year so that's where i come to conclude that well i do expect that uh, well the dividends can be slightly higher than this so this is what i can say that what i can say here clearly is that this company have a lot of growth potential of course growth is not very fast like facebook or alibaba but nonetheless this is a pretty uh, decent company to have to collect some dividends okay so that's what i have for you guys all right so if you guys have any um, question you can just drop me an email okay so um, this is Roland Paybun, PayBK at philip.com.sg So I hope you guys, um, you guys can consider to go to the ATM to ballot for this uh, IPO. Um, I probably will just will try to ballot for this IPO as well. Um, I'm still deciding how much to go for it. But uh, if you guys have any questions, you can just drop me an email at rolandpaybk at philip.com.sg I hope you guys enjoy this video. So uh, that's all for you guys, okay? And if you are not certain of how to apply for the IPO, I'll include the links in the one of the links in the comment below. So uh, click on the links and I'll guide you on how to apply for the IPO through the internet banking. So that's all for you guys and see ya.